death of the former Manchester City midfielder Colin Bell. The tributes paid this week, which you might have seen, are a clear testimony to his enduring popularity. One man who used to stand on the terraces and watch him is the actor and former James Bond, Timothy Dalton. He now reflects on the career of his hero, the King of the Kipax. On Wednesday night at Old Trafford, Manchester fell silent to remember Colin Bell. The team of City No. 8 walked out that night, but for many of the club's supporters, there was only ever one number 8, the man who became known at Main Road as the King of the Kipax. Undoubtedly one of the Manchester City greats, arguably the best player to have pulled on his sky blue shirt. I consider Colin Bell to be one of the greatest players of all time. And I consider him to be possibly the finest tuned athlete that football's ever seen. So when we talk about Colin Bell, we're talking about somebody very special. Colin Bell was from the northeast of England, the son of a County Durham miner. But football took him to the northwest, to Bury, and then to Manchester, where Joe Mercer and Malcolm Allison were assembling a team that would rise to the top of the English game. In his first season there, City were promoted back to the first division. And four years on, they had collected all of the domestic honours and a European trophy too, the Cup Winners' Cup. At the heart of this success was Colin Bell, the complete midfielder, a great tactician, and he scored goals. For his tireless box-to-box -box midfield play, he was also nicknamed Naczynski. After the great derby when in race horse, but it could just as easily have referenced the great ballet dancer. Indeed, he played a starring role in the so-called Ballet on Ice match in the December of 1967 during City's league title winning season, when they famously outplayed Tottenham on a frozen main road pit. Sarabi, Lee! The City team of that time is remembered fondly by all who witnessed it play, myself included, and the triumvirate of Bell, Summerby and Lee is part of the club's folklore. For England, there were 48 caps, and a role in the infamous World Cup defeat to West Germany in Mexico and Poland at Wembley in 1973. But equally, there were goals to remember for his country too. Here's Bell! However, in 1975, a bad tackle in a Manchester League Cup derby put Colin Bell out of the game for two years. The injury uh, was a couple of burst uh, blood vessels, one at the top of the calf and one at the back uh, bottom part of the thigh. And what had happened, all the blood had gone into the knee joint. And what was done in time is seize the knee up. The thing that keeps me going is the more exercise it gets, uh, the closer I am to playing. Despite his hard work in rehab, he was never the same player again. But he had achieved more than enough never to be forgotten. Colin Bell was a star, but not starry. 20 minutes gone, and it's Colin. What a goal! He was understated, reserved, quiet. He said he was more comfortable with a ball at his feet than with a microphone in front of his mouth. Even his autobiography was titled Reluctant Hero. I don't think he realized how great he was, how much he was really appreciated by, by the fans. You know, it's a sad loss. In the years to come, they'll sing about him from the stand that bears his name, Colin Bell the king of the Kipax. Manchester City will love you forever.
beautiful words. Thank you to Timothy Dalton for voicing that for us. Obviously, love watching him play. And uh, some of the tributes this week, uh, Laura, I, I was reading what Mike Summerby, who's been really emotional, knew Colin so well, mm -hmm. saying this week, if you want to compare him to a modern-day footballer, he says he's like Kevin De Bruyne in that he was brilliant on the pitch and off it, but quite unassuming and quite humble with the way that he went about his business. Yeah, and I, I remember um, my, my dad saying to him, he'd, he'd watched him play and stuff and said, when he, when he ran... He said his feet actually never touched the ground. It's like he just ran over the ground. Mm. But he was, he was also... In, when you consider that, you know, the shape of some of the footballers in those days and, and the lifestyle, he was, like, just a real natural mm. athlete and he could just run all... Well, you can see, just come in late in the box all the time. I think there's a lot of football fans who never saw Colin Bell play who've rung their dad this week. And you've done exactly the same to, to see yeah. what sort of player he was. Yeah, absolutely, on the way in. Um, just spoke to my dad and, yeah, dad just said technically what a fantastic player he was, tactically really bright, so kind of a modern-day number eight, box-to-box, -box. Mm. just had that ability to time and arrive in, in the area and, and score really important goals. And I think more than just a player, it's the person that, that, that he was and, you know, just the, the way people have spoken about him in this week says, says everything about him as a man. Yeah, you I, ain't a bad player if they name a stand after you, right? No, I, I hosted an event with him a few years ago and exactly as, as Mike Summerby and also as Timothy Dalton said in there about him being a reluctant hero, you get the feeling, spending any time with him, that he never quite knew how in high regard everyone else held him, both those who'd played with him and those who'd watched him as well. Really sad news this week about mm. Colin Bell and his team, uh, Manchester City, take on Birmingham in the FA Cup uh, this weekend. Let's take you...